Alpacas are from Peru. They're related to llamas and to camels. Um, the nice thing is that unlike both camels and llamas, they don't spit at human beings. They're pretty friendly. They're quite jumpy, nervy, um, but we've had them since uh, around about November and they're slowly getting used to us and the dogs. And as you can see, they're pretty relaxed uh, around us most of the time. There's two breeds of alpaca, Surrey and Hakaya. The Surrey have kind of very sleek hair and the Hakaya have much more kind of woolly hair. Boris is sort of over there, uh, it's a Hakaya with his woolly hair and the other one is Jean-Luc, a uh, black one. Um, they have to be sheared. A lot of people say well they live in the wild, you need to shear them. Um, we have to shear them because if you don't, their coats just get longer and heavier and they get pretty distressed, particularly in summer. Um, we've got a great arrangement actually. Alpaca wool is one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive of all wools. And I'm patron of the local um, retired greyhound uh, rescue association and one of the members is a wool spinner. So we're giving the alpaca wool to them and they'll be able to spin the wool and then raise money from selling it. These guys shearing the alpacas are Kiwis and they come over to England for two months and just have an intensive seven days a week, every day for two months, traveling around the whole of the UK shearing alpacas. And at the same time, they know the animals really well um, so they check them over, they look at every aspect of their eyes, their general health and I'm pleased to report that all five of ours have a very clean bill of health and in good shape. So they're sheared once a year, usually before the end of July, <laughs> nibbling me, and they have very strong back legs so although they don't spit, um, they sure as hell can kick. They say that um, alpacas are the best things you can have to guard hens, chickens, because they will scare off any fox. And so when they're shearing them, you have, it takes two guys to, to tell them and the third guy to do the shearing. They have to hold them down on their side, unlike with the sheep, which sits on its rump. Uh, they tether it, uh, all the four legs. Um, it does look a bit uh, cruel, but I I'm assured that it's not, or so it's only distressed for a very short period of time. Uh, then it gets up, it's summer, it's suddenly no longer wearing a heavy overcoat, it's feeling light and bouncy. It's absolutely astonishing how much wool, although the technical term is fleece, comes off these five animals. Um, and we take a look at this. This is from our black alpaca of the family. He's a wonderful character. Look, he's come to see us. His coat. Hey, uh, John Luke, what do you think of your fleece that we moved? Do you want some back? Shall we make a little wig for you, maybe? Or perhaps a little gilet for a chilly summer days? And here's some of the, the white that, that came off Boris. I think, Bella, you recognize a bit of your coat? We've got about eight bags of these. Um, and just after we had these creatures shared, uh, Lara just left the bags out while she was sorting stuff out and she suddenly noticed that Spooky, our very naughty Labradoodle, had been very quiet for a while and hadn't seen her. Went looking for Spooky and Spooky was having the time of her life. She had ripped open about four of the bags, she had wool everywhere and I mean everywhere. She was rolling around it, she was making herself her own personal very nice bedding, winter coat, duvet and whatever else. 